This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining us to worship our Lord in spirit and in truth on this kind of wet Sunday morning. Uh, we appreciate your presence with us and helping us to worship our God both in person and online. Uh, just a few announcements for you this morning. You may note some flowers up here that are pink. We have a new grandbaby girl. So uh, she was born yesterday morning, Ellen Rowan Powell, and she is doing well. Having said that, I'm going to be BB for the next week, so I'm not going to be in town. Um, there, uh, Lynn Welch um, is a ruling elder, and she's the ruling elder on call this month. So if you have anything you need, you can give Lynn a call. Her phone number's in the bulletin. And also, just a reminder to you that my husband, Mark, who is a pastor, he is also a, the, a pastor on call for y'all. So, And if you absolutely have to call me, you certainly can, because I will have my phone with me and taking lots of pictures. So there's that. <laughs> Having said that, there will be no Tuesday, Tuesdays at 2 Zoom call, because who knows what I'm going to be doing on Tuesday at 2. Please note that there is the Mission Committee meeting um, tomorrow night. And coffee at Frothy is always, you're always welcome to come and have coffee and sit outside with us and just chat at 8.30 on Wednesday morning. Um, I believe those are all the announcements that I have for you this morning. So, as you are able, would you please stand and join me in the call to worship. Come, all who hunger for good news. We thirst for words of hope and healing. Come from rural road and city street. We gather at the king's invitation. Come, join the celebration. Let us worship the Lord. And please join in singing an old hymn number 39, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
reminded in the words of that old, old hymn that God is faithful and God's mercies come and are here with us every single day. God never fails us, and yet there are times in our lives, many times a day, at least from my point of view, where I fall short and make mistakes. I fall short of the person that God created me to be, and I'm sure that's true for you as well. So let us confess our sins before God and before one another using the prayer of confession that's printed in your bulletin, and then we will pause for some silent prayer following. Let us pray. Lord, you see how stubborn we are, how quickly we turn from you toward idols of our own making, how impatient we are when we do not get what we think we deserve, we forget your providential care for us, the countless ways you provide, your gracious response to our cries for help. We do not think on things like justice and goodness. We are not known for our gentleness. We give in to the loud voices that tell us to tend to our own needs only and neglect the very ones you command us to feed. We cannot justify our behavior. We can only confess it, repent, and ask again for your mercy. Forgive us, Lord, so that we can bear witness to your character of loving kindness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And all of God's people say, Amen. My friends, again, as that hymn reminds us, the mercies of our God are from everlasting to everlasting, that all who call upon the name of our Lord in truth and repentance are forgiven. So know this day in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. So as God is forgiven, us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Would you please stand and sing praise. any little ones present with us right now today I'm guessing that there might be some online and anyway you get to hear a children's sermon anyway so there there's that how about that today in the second lesson I'm going to read Paul uses a word four times in different forms and the word is rejoice do you know what rejoice means it means to be happy and to sing praise and to give God thanks for something that's happened. Do you have joy in your life? I know I do. There's lots of things we can rejoice over. We can rejoice that it's the weekend. We can rejoice that the rain is falling on our earth. That's a good thing, isn't it, for all the plants and the animals and even for us? We can rejoice that we get to worship God today and right now. And I get to rejoice a special time today with my husband because 
we're grandparents again and we get a new baby to hold and love. We are so excited. We are so excited. I want you to think about joy this week. And I want you to think about the things that you're excited about and you're thankful for. And I want you to see if sometime this week and probably even today, if you can make someone else smile and bring them some joy. I'll bet you can. I know you can. So that's your job today and every day this week. How about that? Try to make someone smile. Think you can do it? I'll bet you can. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for joy. And not just happy joy, but joy that fills us and goes down to our big toes and helps us be so thankful for who you are and our lives together and our moms and our dads and grandparents and our friends and our cousins, all these people that you put in our lives to bring us joy and for us to bring joy to. So help us to do that this week and even today, oh God. Show us opportunities where we can bring your joy to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now for the Old Testament lesson, Psalm 106. The first five verses can be found on page 557 of the Bible in your pews. Please listen for God's word to you. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord or declare all his praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you deliver them, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory in your heritage. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me grab a drink of water really fast. I forgot. Okay. Now as we prepare to hear another word from God, uh, let us pray. Gracious God, I do believe you have called each of us here today and that you want something for us as well as something of us. So give us ears to hear you, eyes to see how you are already at work in our lives, and hearts and lives that are ready and willing to be changed by the winds of your spirit. Amen. From Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi in the fourth chapter, the first nine verses found on page 198, of the New Testament portion of your pew Bible. Please listen again for God's word to you. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Yodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, Help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, 
and the God of peace will be with you. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We find ourselves today near the end of Paul's letter to his beloved congregation in Philippi. Not all of his letters are endearing as this one is. Have you ever read Galatians? <laughs> Paul, though, writes to his friends in Philippi, and he writes to them from prison, most likely in Rome, as he has heard of some issues which he feels he needs to address in this letter. You know, there are always issues in communities, aren't there? People have various opinions. That's what makes life so fun, but also so interesting. Because we all take on our own way of doing things or of saying things. And many times when we're with people and we're with them often, others' habits kind of maybe start to grate on our nerves a little. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> or rather, we allow the way others do things. We choose to let those little things bother us. And if we don't recognize our own willingness to let those things bother us, it may well drive a wedge in our relationship. Maybe it's the way someone snaps their gum when they're chewing. Does that bug you? <laughs> or maybe it's the guy whose leg doesn't seem to stop bouncing up and down when you're sitting at the table having coffee with them. Oh. I remember Mark, my husband, um, telling the story of when he was in high school sitting in a room on a Saturday morning with 30 other students taking the ACT exam for college. Does that bring up a chill or a fear inside you? Well, Mark tells that another guy was sitting, actually it was a friend of mine as well, sitting in front of Mark, and the whole time this other guy kept tapping his pencil. Tap, 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 tap. Mark allowed it to bother him so much so that it influenced his score. <laughs> he still got into college. The bottom line is that we have choices, don't we, all the time, about how we will respond to someone else or even respond to stimuli in our own environment. And each choice that we make leads us down a particular path, inevitably leading us to more choices. It reminds me of that 1999 movie, The Matrix, Early in the film, one of the lead characters, Morpheus, offers someone else a choice, and he says, this is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, and the story ends, and you wake up in your bed and believe whatever it is you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Or if you want a more scriptural example, in chapter 24 of the book of Joshua, the people get a choice about whether or not they're going to choose and follow the Lord. And so Joshua tells them, choose this day whom you will serve. In 2 Samuel, there's another choice King David has about whether or not to take Bathsheba. In the Gospels, Pilate has a choice about whether or not to have Jesus executed. We all have choices, large and small. And so many of those choices we make have ripples that go out beyond ourselves. Several of us in the congregation have recently read a marvelous memoir uh, by Dr. Eva Edith Eager titled The Choice, and I would encourage you to read it. Dr. Eager is a clinical psychiatrist whose practice and life were deeply impacted by her early years spent as a prisoner at Auschwitz. 
In speaking of her psych psychiatric practice, she writes, today I have been assigned two new patients, both Vietnam veterans, both paraplegics. They have both the same diagnosis and the same prognosis. I meet Tom first. He's lying on his bed, curled up in the fetal position, cursing God and country. He seems imprisoned by his injured body, by his misery, by his rage. But when I go to the other vet's room, remember, same diagnosis, same prognosis, I find Chuck out of bed and sitting in his wheelchair. It's interesting, he says to me. I've been given a second chance at life. Isn't it amazing? He is brimming over with a possibility of discovery. I sit in this wheelchair, he says, and I go out on the lawn, on the grounds, and the flowers are so much closer. I can see my children's eyes. Dr. Eager concludes, we can choose to take responsibility for our hardships and our healing. We can choose to be free. Well, in this passage today, Paul offers us the choice of joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. It is a matter of choice, isn't it? We can choose to rejoice or we can choose to be filled with despair. We can choose to be angry or we can choose to laugh. Paul is inviting us on this higher road in how we interact and live with others. You see, joy is not an escape from pain, but rather a reconsideration from a different perspective because it is grounded in what God has done for us in Christ and what God continues to do for all of us. This joy that is in the Lord is therefore shared by those who live in Christ. The interesting thing is that this is the same Paul who is writing from a jail cell. He of all people shouldn't be joyful. His poor eyesight, some unidentified thorn in the flesh, chased out of cities, why would anyone believe Paul, always having to defend himself? As he writes to the Christians in Corinth, five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked for a night and a day. I was adrift at sea on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship through many sleepless nights, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. Yikes! Beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, and yet here he is encouraging joyfulness from a prison cell. And why? Because it is Christ Jesus who lives in him, who guides him, who encourages and calls him to continue to share the grace of our Lord, even if it is from a prison cell. His joy is unflappable, and his joy almost dances off the pages of this letter. Having said all that, though, joy may not be a natural reaction for you. From where you're sitting right now, it may well be the farthest thing from your heart. And given the divisive atmosphere found almost everywhere we turn these days, joy may be hard to find or, or locate. After all, the election season is in its heated final throes. What else is happening? Threats and realities of climate change abound. Forest fires raging in the west and out of control. Hurricanes and one storm lined up after another, poised to hit the mainland. 
health care is endangered, jobs continue to be lost, there's no compromise on the horizon for rent relief or any other relief, and no end in sight yet for the coronavirus. There's a lot to not be joyful about. But joy, joy is a muscle. And muscles need to be exercised, don't they? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Paul reminds us in four more verses. I can do all things, so this is how we can exercise our joy muscles. Knowing we can't do this work by ourselves, knowing Paul knows that he can't do this work by himself, who writes, him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we could ever ask or imagine. We need to take a page from Paul and remember in everything he writes by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So we begin exercising our joy muscles by asking for joy from the Lord. Ask and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and that door will be opened. Secondly, keep your eyes alert for opportunities of joy. I'll bet you'll find some. As a bunch of us were playing pickleball this past week, someone said, look, a hot air balloon. Oh, joy. It was so much fun. And then... As I was walking our dog Zoe early one morning this past week, before the sun had risen, I looked and oh, there were four deer grazing just beyond the pond. Or a knock on your door and a friend arrives bringing an unexpected gift. Or someone cooks you dinner, which is a gift of joy unto itself, yeah? Or you receive a text of encouragement when your phone pings. Or a conversation with a waitress brings a smile to your face and hers. There are opportunities every moment of our lives, of every day, to notice joy, to live into that joy, even to offer that joy to others. And as we keep looking for it, we will find it more and more as our hearts grow larger because of all that joy that we have observed. And with our hearts growing larger and larger, all of a sudden our choices become simpler. Knowing that choosing the way of Jesus is the one that truly brings us joy. So this week, choose joy. Pray for joy. Look for joy. You won't be sorry. And as Paul finishes his letter to his friends, so do I. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. So now to him who by the work, the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we could ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. As a response to God's word, let us stand and join together in singing. How can I keep from singing? <laughs>
remain standing, let us um, affirm what we believe using a portion of the Confession of Belhar found in your bulletin. We believe that Christ's work of reconciliation is made manifest in the Church as the community of believers who have been reconciled with God and with one another, that this unity of the people of God must be manifested and be active in a variety of ways, in that we love one another, that we experience community with one another, that we are obligated to give ourselves willingly and joyfully to be of benefit and blessing to one another, and together are built up to the stature of Christ, to the new humanity. You may be seated. Kind of like that song said, how could we keep from sharing joys today, given it's a joyful day and a rejoicing day and a theme for the day? So do you have joys this morning you would like to share with the congregation, either here or at home? You can say them. I know we've gotten out of the practice of this, but you, I, you can shout it out with your mask on. Come on. What are your joys? Yes, Robert. Your 34th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. She's really cute, so if you want to see a picture of her, just let me know. <laughs> I have at least three in my phone right now. <laughs> Other joys that you have. It is always a joy, certainly, to be in worship with you all, both uh, live and remotely as well. Do you, are there concerns that you have that you would like to share with the congregation? Okay, all right. Well, certainly we want to continue praying for those who grieve and those who are recovering from all kinds of things. We pray for those who don't have enough food. We pray for those who have undergone yet another hurricane and the devastation abounds on the Gulf Coast. For those who are struggling with wildfires and lack of income and disease and broken relationships. As we pray then today, I will be using a portion of a prayer written by Ted Loder. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this day, as the water rains down, filling our rivers, we give you thanks for the rain, for an opportunity this day on the Sabbath to rest, to worship you, which is our primary work, to be reminded of how much you love us and to express our gratitude to you this day. We give you thanks, O oh God, for where we live and move and have our being, knowing that all that is a gift from you. We give you thanks for opportunities to pause and rest for new life, for years of relationship celebrated. We give you thanks, O oh God. We give you thanks for the healing that is taking place in our lives, in our bodies, in our hearts. We pray, O oh God, certainly for your healing mercies to pour down upon those who are broken in body, in mind, in spirit, in relationship. We pray, O oh God, for your presence to be with those in the midst of destruction from fire and storm. Help us, O oh God, to reach out, to lend a hand as we are able, 
to put ourselves in their shoes, to know what it's like to lose everything, and yet not you, for you are steadfast and true. Help us, O oh God, to be your children, loving your children in this world. Holy God, the mystery of your infinite loftiness is not greater than your imminent presence with us, and we gather today in awe of both and of you. In this moment, we thank you for lacing eternity into our time, the longing for what lasts in our hearts, traces of your kingdom into the round of our days, the assurance that you have made us for yourself into core of our souls. We praise you for the joy that renews us through the miracle of each other, the wonder of children, the sharing of bread, the occasion of justice, the healing of music, the sprawl of sunsets and scatter of stars, the anchoring of prayer, the gift of Christ, the summons of your spirit, making us small but blessed partners in your ongoing creation. For your grace beyond our grasp, we praise you and thank you and ask that you deepen our faith and strengthen our faithfulness. We pray all of these things in the strong name of Christ, and we are bold to pray the words he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us continue to respond to the gift of God's presence and grace in our lives by the giving of our offering. And just a note to you that our offering plates are located near the exits of our sanctuary and always you can give online and when you do so give joyfully
Gracious God, indeed, we are an offering giving back to you out of the abundance you have given to us. So take these gifts, O God, and take our lives and multiply us all and use us for your glory and for your kingdom. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is that Hebrew tune, and we have sung it before, and if you feel so moved, you can clap or dance. I know we're Presbyterian, but still, you can clap or dance. And we'll sing it a couple of times. I'm just saying. It's even printed in the hymnal to clap, okay? Just saying. It's okay. <laughs> Got you smiling, didn't I? Joy! So as you go forth from this place, share that joy. That's part of our job, is to share the joy. And people will wonder what you've been up to. So then you can tell them. Yeah. <laughs> so now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. Amen.